Can Jamaica's Christopher Taylor become world champion in 2022 or Olympic champion in 2024? Welcome back to the channel, people. Welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time, thank you for making it Peter Lloyd World. Now, please go ahead, hit that subscribe button so we can continue to grow. Look, we have a personal goal of getting to 10,000 subs as soon as it's possible. And we're getting there because of people like yourself. So, hey, hit the button. Hit the subscribe button. <laughs> also, if you enjoy our content, please hit that like button. It helps the vlogs, the videos to go out. Um, the algorithms absolutely love it. And that engagement really pushes out these videos. So, if you like our content, hit that like button. Also, please remember to leave a comment. I learn so much. Sometimes I don't agree. However, I do learn a lot. So, are you ready for deal with this? Are you ready? Yep. Good to go. In my opinion, Christopher Taylor may be the most talented, multifaceted sprinter that Jamaica has ever produced. I mean, quite literally. I should say schoolboy, shouldn't I? Quantified. Ever produced. Now, I know that in this world filled with people like Stephen Gardner, Michael Cherry, Karani James, and Zebrano, the question of whether or not he could become a world champion seems, well, almost irrelevant. So let's take a gander. Let's look at this brilliant young man's career thus far. June 30th, 2018, Christopher Taylor equalized, equaled the National Junior 100 meter record set by Johan Blake in 2007 when he ran an astounding 10.11 this is that race commanding remarkable 10.11 10.11 people you have to understand that um worldcraft athletes those are the times they're running and winning major races and as a schoolboy this is the time he ran in 2018 to say that i've always been impressed by young christopher taylor is to be honest quite an understatement like many of us i became enamored i became you know fascinated by this young man's seemingly endless depth of just raw talent brilliant in so many disciplines of the sprints i mean 10.11 are some serious time people that's 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 running seriously fast in 2018 as a teenager that's crazy fast time but christopher taylor is much more than just a hundred meter sprinter so we know that he's phenomenally fast and shows us the level of grit and determination unusual for someone so young remember he was the most much touted and highly respected captain of the Calabar track team and led well led from the front whatever he asked these other athletes to do he himself was willing to do it and i must concede that i think all of us were astounded as to his maturity christopher taylor's 200 meters personal best is 20.35 set at the Boys and Girls Championships in 2018. Now, you need to understand that only Usain Bolt has run a faster schoolboy, that is junior time, 20.35. And look at this, he dominates. Within the, the first 20 to 35 meters, he was just up on everybody maintains that that speed right through the line solid form of course it needs some work who doesn't but dominant dominant always dominant and fast 20.35 you know what i said only usain Bolt has run faster as a junior in jamaica and we all know that usain Bolt is the legend so you run a time equal to Johan Blake. This, by the way, Johan Blake is the second fastest 100 meter sprinter of all time. And you equal the national junior record set by him of 10.11. You go on to run a time that 
only in the 200 meter that only Usain Bolt, the living legend, has ran fast. These are two relatively similar dis disciplines, but like I've said in other vlogs, sorry, other videos, not many athletes are able to command this degree of, um, how would I put it, you know, this dominance in, in the 100 as well as the 200. Most people are very good at one. And as a youngster, this young man from Calabar demonstrated tremendous depth and just raw talent. Now, Christopher Taylor, again, is, is the exception to the rule in many respects. The Calabar High student is unbeaten, was unbeaten all of 2018. Um, he established a national record. He equaled Johan Blake's national record, as I said, in 100 meters, 10.11. Um, he then goes on to run a PB, as I said earlier, and I showed you earlier, 20.35. And then, in the same year, within the same season, he runs a junior record in the 400 meters running an astounding 44.88 a junior running sub 45 now if any of you understand what the, the 400 meters is sub 45 is the holy grail for many world-class 400 meter runners not many people achieve running sub 45 and here as a teenager again as you're seeing in dominant fashion absolutely dominant i mean literally leading from start to finish leading throughout the entire race in so within by the last 200 meters he was a clear five as you can see five meters ahead of everyone else and he just extended that lead look at this people he's just extending the lead extending the lead running right through the line power stamina and speed so you have a young man who has run remarkable times in the 100 200 and 400. i don't know of any other sprinter that jamaica has produced in recent years who has been able to do this just dominant 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 in fact, maybe his weakest, his weakest discipline is the 100 meters. And he's the, he, outside of Yo, Johan Blake as a junior, he has run the fastest time, equaling Johan Blake's 10.11. You see, his, his PB in the 200 meters, 20.35. Only Usain Bolt has run faster as a junior in Jamaica. And 400 meters, he runs a sub. 45 right establishing a new junior record of 44.88 now i know that we as a community we tend to like sprinters but you have to understand that the 400 meter the one lap is actually a sprint too and it is probably the hardest of disciplines so you have a junior athlete dominating in all three sprints 100 200 and 400 meters which makes him absolutely exceptional now, earlier this year, in February of 2021, he establishes a national record, not junior, he's now 22 years of age, he establishes a national record in the 300 meters. At the New Balance Indoor Grand Prix, he runs 32.80. Didn't win the race, came second, but still national record. And this says to me again, Christopher Taylor is improving and improving and improving. So we have an athlete who is consistently lowering his PB. And if you speak to anyone who's an expert within the track and field, I mean, I'm, I'm no expert, I'm merely uh, a fan. They'll tell you that for the athlete, lowering that PB consistently is an extremely important thing because lowering your PB means that you are improving and improving and that's the whole game. The game is to get faster and faster and faster. 
and clearly Christopher Taylor has been doing this. Now, let's talk about injury. In 2019, in the, well, in the 400 meters, we saw, well, let me show you, let, 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 let me show you. Christopher Taylor is clearly injured here. Now, I know as a captain, he was doing what I guess one would call the, the noble thing. You know, he was, he was being noble. But he was running injured, ended up coming third. And this leads to a whole other question because this is one of the issues that um, Christopher Taylor has suffered from. He's been, you know, the injuries since 2018. 2019, of course, this is when this happened. And um, that th this, this thing about injury concerns me because one of the things like, I wondered is why didn't his coach tell him no you this makes no sense it makes no sense for you to run now i understand the logistics um of wanting to how would i put it um uh, wanting to win champs so much that as the captain you are willing to take that risk but his coach michael clark should have said no because this hamstring injury that um, he sustained, you know, during that 200 meter final, I think it has it has continued to be how would I put it now? His his Achilles heel, his Achilles heel is is, is one great weakness. Now I know many of us, you know, we talk about this whole thing about injury and athletes and why. And those are all valid questions. You know, why would you allow your athlete to run injured? And you know, I mean, you're telling me that winning champs is more important than the athlete's health. This is a whole other discussion that we need to have, you know. And I mean, I don't want to be accusatory because that, uh, that the, the Calabar coach is a coach that I respect, but I just was confused. Now, at the Tokyo Olympics 400 meter semifinals, Taylor books his place to the finals, but again, he's injured. Um, he's the first Jamaican, uh, well, he runs 44.92, his season's best. Um, this is this year. And he's the first Jamaican since Athens Games to make the finals. Um, that Athens Games was in 2004. Now, the tumbleweed track athlete goes on to the finals. Um, well... Well, I, I'm, I'm jumping ahead. This is the semi-final run. Uh, he's running here behind the USA's Michael Cherry. If I'm incorrect about that, guys, please correct me. But I think it's Michael Cherry. And he runs a solid... Um, his, 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 his fastest time for the season, 44.92. But right after that, right after he runs this and books his place in the finals, here he is in a wheelchair being taken off. And I am not sure if it's a pinched nerve or if it's the same hamstring injury. Remember, I've said repeatedly you know, that one of the, the, the great bane of the athlete is injury. And injury is not just a physical injury, but it's reco recovering um, from that injury, you know. I, I mean, uh, when I saw these people, I mean, because I thought he did a solid job. And I thought, okay, in the finals, he can, he can get top four. He can get into the top four. I, I really thought he would have gotten to the top four. Um, but to see him leaving again an, an, another time grimacing in pain, you know, one really wonders. So, of course, he goes on to the finals and he he, he places six. He runs 45.02. I personally think he was not fully recovered from this injury. So, he did a good job. Run six, injured 45.02 that's you know it's not it's not a great time but it's not a terrible time and i think had he been injury free he would have been up there in that top four that's my personal opinion uh you guys can tell me if you agree with me hit the you know just just leave a comment down below so let's hold our reasoning now and i'm going to try to make sure this is not a rant 
here we have a young man who is just phenomenally talented at a whole different level of talent now we have a lot of very talented people but um i realized that a lot of people when they speak of christopher taylor there's a sense of heartbreak you know um we like i said we all were were fascinated by his tremendous talent but here's the thing that you all have to remember that that talent hasn't gone anywhere he's actually improving he's running better and better he seems to be getting over that injury um and what i'm hoping is that he heals properly for 2020 uh 22 and i think he'll be in the mix for a medal now i know you're gonna say to me I, you know, the, the, the obviously Gardner, obviously um, James, obviously uh, Zambrano, um, Cherry, and of course uh, the, the the US sprinter who is running phenomenal times with really, really uh, anyway, it'll come back to me, Curly. Uh, of course, I'm not dismissing these people. I'm not saying that these people are not there, but I'm saying that if we can get a Christopher Taylor back to the form of a 2020, 2018. Not the speed, because he's clearly improved, but if we can get him to that level of fitness, I think the best is yet to come. Now I know those of you who follow the channel will probably say I'm the eternal optimist, but we have seen Christopher Taylor do the impossible. And you know, he himself said it in, a, in, in an interview. Um, hold on there, hold on there, hold on there. One of the great concerns about Christopher Taylor is has he burnt out something I heard in 2019 here in an interview with the beacon he says I'm going to keep my focus so yes I will make the transition another concern that many people have because there's this this obvious question that many of our male and female athletes leaving out of boys and girls champs just simply never get to the pro level he's one of the few persons who addressed it directly and said I am going to be okay I'm not burnt out, I'm going to be okay. I hope I've demonstrated how remarkably versatile and talented this young man is. Um, my concern is not anything about burnout or the wrong mindset. I think he has showed strength of character, courage, straight leadership abilities, and he turns upon big occasions. My question is, was the damage done to his body? Is it going to be is he going to be fully healed by 2022? And that's why I said 2022 or the Olympics in 2024. I believe that this kind of talent doesn't just disappear into the sunset. I think Christopher Taylor is going to be back in a massive way. Remember, you know, people, Usain Bolt went through years of injury, repeated injury, where he just wasn't sparking. Once he found the right home, meaning coaching and team, he came back and became the best. This young man, Christopher Taylor, is amazingly talented. If fit and healthy, he will be a force to be reckoned with and he can not only medal but win gold in either 2022 or 2024. Of course, I would love to hear your opinion, all right? Um, remember, Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. It means a lot to us. You're helping us to grow. If you enjoy our content, ensure that you hit that like button. The algorithms absolutely love the engagement. It gets these videos out. You know what, guys? Please, sorry, I shouldn't call them the guys. Kings and queens, please share the content if you truly enjoy it. Get the content out there. Hit the like button. Keep us growing. And leave a comment. I cannot wait to hear what you say. And as always, bless up. Yay. <laughs>